Hey guys, Kaylee here with my sisters to give you some tips and tricks on bridesmaid makeup or just picture day makeup. They both had kind of different preferences, so I did their makeup kind of like they would like to do it on the day of, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did that and give you tons of tips and tricks, at least as many as I can. First of all, choose one or two features to glam up. You don't wanna overtake the bride, so choose one or two things. Jill likes her eyes and her lips to kind of pop, and Anna really likes her bronze skin and her eyelashes. If you're going to do something like a statement lip, make sure that you ask the bride just to make sure that she likes it too. And also make sure that you use products that you trust. It's not a day to try out something new. Now for foundation, I'm going to show you a full coverage option and a less coverage option and I'm going to use Revlon Colorstay for both. I love Revlon Colorstay because it doesn't have any SPF which means that it won't flash in pictures and make you look super white. It does have a beautiful finish in pictures. It's heat, or I'm sorry, it's sweat and tear resistant which makes it perfect for weddings. So I really, really love it. Also, it's very full coverage. So if you just apply it like this with like a Sigma P80 or P82, it looks beautiful. Definitely with the dense Kabuki brush, it gets the most beautiful finish. And it covers quite a bit. Now, if you don't want as much coverage, you can use a moisturizer that has no SPF, mix it with your foundation, and apply it. And you can apply it with your fingers if you want, but I kind of like using a brush on other people's skin. But instead of using a tinted moisturizer, it's better to do it this way. That way you don't have to worry about the SPF. I don't know of a tinted moisturizer that doesn't have SPF in it. So this is just a nice way to kind of use your moisturizer and your foundation together. You don't have to waste your foundation. I'll show you how to use it later. So for concealer, um, if you're doing your under eye concealer, definitely watch out for, un for SPF because you don't want this to flash in pictures just under your eyes or over any blemishes. For Jill, I'm using the Dynair Airbrush Concealer. It's amazing, but you want to make sure to use a thin, thin layer with any under eye concealer so that it doesn't crease. Also, you want to make sure that you set it with a powder, and look at how much difference this makes. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, you want to set it with a powder. Um, that way it won't crease either and it holds throughout the day. But if you don't want to buy another concealer, with Revlon Colorstay, all you have to do is just double up the foundation. It's so buildable that that second layer of foundation actually acts as a concealer, which is super duper awesome because it's an awesome finish and it's, you know, you don't have to buy another product. And you can do the same thing if you use the, the tinted moisturizer option, so you're not wasting your foundation there either. Now for powder. Now Revlon Colorstay doesn't actually need powder, but Jill's skin is pretty oily, so I went ahead and used the mattifying powder over it. Make sure, again, that it doesn't have any SPF. You don't want to flash in pictures. Um, but that's just going to give her a nice kind of porcelain-y finish. It's going to help control the oil throughout the day. And if you went for the kind of moisturizer set, make sure that you dust some powder over it because you're probably looking a little bit shiny and that will pick up in pictures and it will not be cute. You definitely don't want to look like a grease monkey or anything like that. So just go ahead and dust a little bit of powder over that to set it in place. It will make your makeup last a lot longer. Now for blush. You want to pick a concealer, or I'm sorry, a blush that you really like with your skin tone. So these are the two that I picked for my sisters. I think they look really good on their skin tone. And then you want to make sure that you just apply a little bit more than usual. Now on camera, this looks normal for Jill and Anna, but I promise you in real life, they were very, very blushed um, because they were already under those bright lights. And that's exactly what being on a camera will do for you when you get your pictures taken, is that it will wash you out a little bit. So just add some extra blush just to be safe. If you want to add bronzer to wake yourself up, you can totally do that. Just make sure you're comfortable with bronzer, that way you don't end up looking like an Oompa Loompa. Again, that would not be too cute and I'm pretty sure your bride would not be happy with it. And if you want your makeup to last extra long, you can use a makeup setting spray. Now for eyes, Jill and Anna really are not big eyeshadow girls, so I did a really simple eyeshadow look on both of them. And I primed their eyes first. You always want to use a primer and make sure your eyeshadow lasts so much longer. You can get them in the drugstore or high end, whichever way you want. And then I used the Sleek Storm palette on both of them. And for both of them, I took this kind of shimmery, goldy sand tone and put it over, over the lids to just kind of give a nice wash to the lids and kind of even them out a little bit. And then I took a lighter color and put it in through the inner third and underneath the brow bone. And then I took a really dark color for their contour color just to make sure that it stands out. Even if you're not an eyeshadow person, I definitely recommend doing something like this. It's going to get a nice finish and a nice shape to your eyes and it will help to define them in pictures and it's not a ton of work and this kind of shape looks good on everybody. So make sure that you look at that contour color. You can see that it's quite a bit darker than both of their skin tone which will make it pop out a little bit more in pictures so that they don't end up being washed out. Now for eyeliner. Obviously you want to make sure it's waterproof and you definitely want to use eyeliner. But if you're not really an eyeliner person, you don't have to worry. 
Jill's not, and what I did for her was to use this brown gel liner and to smudge it into the upper lash line and the lower lash line. But then with her eye shape, I decided it was better to put it in the waterline. You don't have to, it's not always flattering on everyone, just kind of play around with that on yourself. But that's a nice way to get a subtle liner without it being really dramatic. Anna, on the other hand, loves her black liquid liner. But the way that she made it wedding appropriate was to keep it at a smaller line. So it's not quite Cleopatra or anything. Um, it's just enough to where you can see it and it's really defining, but it's not overdone. And that's how I would recommend if you want to do black eyeliner for a wedding. And now for your eyebrows. General rule of thumb is if you normally do your eyebrows, do your eyebrows. If you normally don't, don't. But this is the one thing that you don't want to overdo for pictures because you will end up looking like Bert and Ernie from Sesame Street and it will not be cute. And then for mascara, um, you definitely want to use one that's waterproof. I think that's fairly obvious. And if you're like Anna, you can always double up your mascara to get the extra dramatic looking lashes. She loves them and she's amazing at making those like bomb.com lashes. So these are the two mascaras that she uses to do that and the camera did not do it justice in real life. Her eyelashes looked fake. It was kind of awesome. Now for lips, try a lipstick that's going to stay on a little bit better. Just experiment around. Make sure that you pick one that you're comfortable with. Again, if you want to do a statement lip, talk to the bride about it. Show her the color. Make sure she's okay with it. You don't want any um, not nice surprises the day of. And then if you have fair skin, add a tiny bit of bronzer because it really helps to wake the skin up. I've noticed when you do a statement lip on fair skin, it tends to kind of wash you out. So just add in some bronzer to wake you back up. And if you do a nude lip, try doing like a nude lipstick and covering it with a colorful gloss. That way you don't look washed out in pictures because that's not exactly good either. So that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you found some good tips and tricks. And that is my last video before the wedding. So go back and check through my other wedding hairstyles. I'm sorry, not wedding hairstyles. I'm so used to saying hairstyles. My other wedding videos and check back December 3rd. I'll be back with my final videos on my looks and then we're going to jump right into holiday and winter hair care and all those fun things that you guys ask for. I'll see you guys then. I'll miss you. Bye.